Good afternoon from Yami B TV. Wishing you well, Sonny. Plenty of love your way and hoping your day is going the best it possibly can. Now, we ain't done a video for a little while. Uh, now, there seems to be a little bit more normality in my life. Um, it's a story that some of you have been asking me to deliver for quite some time. Why? Because obviously I met him for a couple of weeks when he actually came to prison. This case involves a man named so-called Florida Phil Wells, right? Now, I think the case took place in about 1989, a straight go going man, a law-abiding citizen, a man that had never committed a crime ever in his whole life. His job though, day to day, was driving a security van around the country or in the surrounding areas or where he worked to, to certain depots to make sure money um, is delivered and received at the right time, um, according to what his job um, consisted of, right? So, Phil Wills, right? Uh, some of you might have heard this case already. Um, had a friend who worked, who had a couple of shops, so to speak. Um, another straight going man, a man that was never involved in crime, um, that he liked him and he liked him and he said to him, probably one of those days, that, yeah, man, now I'm a security um, driver, um, delivering a lot of money every day and that kind of stuff. The only thing was, is that Phil Wills talking to this other um, law-abiding man, right? Another good man, right? Um, he had a friend, family, or whatever they say, and he told them, I got mate, he drives a security van around and all that. Probably, like most of us, there's probably um, some criminals in the background somewhere that we know him and they know him, and you know, all the, the, all the you know, the pulling in factors uh, that goes along with normal human life for most of us, not all of us, right? So, he tells the person he tells, not Phil Wills, um, this is mate. He tells this guy who is a criminal. Drugs, links to all different fraternities, um, all around the country, all around, mm, all surrounding areas of the British Isles, right? And they say, what? Driving what? Security vans and delivering that much money? What, what, what much? Is... All of a sudden, no, 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 I don't know. It's just, it's... Obviously, being an ex-criminal, some of us that watch Yarrow TV will know exactly what I mean. Um, they're saying, yeah, but, but how does it work? And, but the pull of friends and, you know, being persuaded by criminals, even though you're not a criminal yourself and wanting to play part of, belonging to, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, he's a good geezer, man. His name's Phil Wells, Florida Phil, you know, as it turned out. And he said, but what's the biggest amount of money? So anyway, that was the start of it all. Now, this guy that owned the shops, Tells Phil Wells, um, listen, we, we, do whatever, why don't you ever think about um, nicking that money and driving off of it or trying to find a way out? And all this, you, don't, you won't get caught. At least you get away with the money and all that. Something like that. We don't know if it's exactly if those are the words. Right? I wasn't there. Remember, I was in prison at this time. But remember, I know a few parties involved in this. Now, all of a sudden, Phil Wells is thinking, might seem like a good idea. So that friend who owns the shots says to him, what was the amount of love? Because those friends that he has now, had before in a criminal fraternity, say, find out when's the biggest load of money that's coming in on that van and let us know. Put it to him and let him and all that, right? So Phil Wells probably tells him, and says, yeah, now this day, yeah, there might be 600,000. On this day, there might be a million. They wait, probably, I don't know, right? Till there's a million pound in there, right? So all of a sudden, it seems like a good idea to fill wells. All that um, pulling power of big money, uh, nothing much can't happen to me. I ain't got no previous convictions. I could leg it off into the sunset. I'm bloody, bloody, blah, blah, right? So his friend, the one that owned the shops, right? He says, they set up a day. He says, yeah, do that. Drive off with it. I'll tell them lot, my mates, 
and we go, we sort something out and they'll direct you and give you the right advice and to get away with this thing um, and you'll live, you'll ride off into the sunset and hey, your life is all right forever. Apart from, of course, you're the man driving the van and at some stage you're going to have to do a prison sentence for it once they capture you or if they do or they don't, it's only a matter of time really. So they sort out the day, the day when the biggest amount of money was in there. Um, no one else there, apparently, allegedly, um, somewhere down in the surrounding areas. Phil Wells, Florida Phil Wells, drives off with the money. He was such a good geezer that he left his, um, the ones he works with, you know, his companion in the car, you know, his mates down at the depot, all talk, he left all their wages there. What a good geezer, man. Right, so he done that. I think that was what the endearing factor was to the public. He named, yeah, Florida Phil. Yeah, no, he was all right. He was, at least he gave them their wages. That's to that Robin Hood kind of thing, if you get what I mean, right? He gets the money, he drives off, right? They, them lot, not the man down by the shops, but those that he knows allegedly, meet him and say, listen, give us the money, get out of the country, we'll give, you back, give them about 50 grand at the million. Uh, this is what happens in that life, you know. So he takes that, he says, they said, listen, he said, well, tell everyone, tell everyone, Phil Wills, that you're going to Florida, right, to disappear into the sunset. But when I say Florida Phil, as far as I know, not being bad-minded or anything, he never actually went to Florida, did he? It was a smoke screen to make everyone think he was going to Florida, right? Funny one, this one I would have used back in the day. Right, so he gets it, he's a, he's a good charismatic kind of figure, Phil Wells, right, or thinks he is, right, until he get involved with all them lot uh, that I met back in the day, so. So, he's gone, about a week's gone by, right, um, everyone's searching for him, the news has come out, it's in the papers, um, yeah, he's gone to Florida, mate, with a million pounds, all right, no, he never, right, so, he disappeared, oh, no, the other fact was this, right? I can't remember whether it was the summit over here or the summit in Russia, but I know it's either Reagan, Gorbachev at that time there, um, an interpreter by the name of Olga, right? Um, um, Phil Wells must have seen taken a shine to her. So whether it was there or there, whether it was whether he was still over it before he legged it over them other places that other people say that he went. Um, he met her and he liked her. And the pull of her, you know, with his, you know, with the thing, with the way he was coming across our own shops and all that. I'll go, nah, man, I'm a straight guy, man. I got, you know, money's coming in from, oh, is it really? So it was either, he was over here first, I met her, and then legged it. I remember hearing that. It might have been Malta. Maybe we had to spend some time with her over Russia, um, but something like that, right? So they're doing this romance thing. He's spending money on her for, with the promise that those guys he left that million pound with, he's only had about 50 or 60, so I believe, remember I know someone, that knows someone and then we'll get to that bit in a minute, and he's run out of money. We're, you know, I'm meant to be sending me money. They invested it in drugs and all that kind of stuff with the promise, don't worry, you'll be all right, mate. We'll double this, we'll triple the money and all that. What's this, right? He gets the um, he comes back, he starts threatening, not threatening, but he goes back to the guy, so-called guy, that owns the shop, said, listen, you tell him not, if I don't get my money, um, I'm going to start telling everyone everything. Apparently, allegedly, I wasn't there. Someone went down there and gave him a slap and warned him. I said, blah, 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 right? Don't worry, your money's all right, but sort something out. Don't come and it up over here. And that kind of stuff. Now, the other geezer, one of the shops, he says, yeah, but I don't really want to be involved. What if he talks about, you know, everyone's getting a bit para, paranoid and all that, right? So he goes away somewhere else, right? They come, he still says, they're sending him two, three grands and all that. Not really a lot. So he's got his living, you know, while he's at large on the run. The whole world's looking for Florida Phil Wells, right? He's there thinking, um... He's still thinking I'm living a life of Riley, they're still going to look after me. But he started getting talking to a couple of other friends as well, because this is what the game does, especially when you don't know, you involve other people, you know, I'm losing trust in them, they owe me this and this and that. This is the kind of mix up that it brings, right? So, what they had to do, 
now. Because they were doing them lot, not Phil Wells. Those were the money were doing what they were going to do. You know, that had to go about three or four or five ways, so I believe. Um, they, they, they got to go back. They decided, now we've got to go and pay him a visit because he's talking too much, right? They turned up over there with black leather gloves, right? Black hats, looking apart, you know, I mean, criminals, killers, blah, blah, blah. They were saying that I knew a couple of those, the other side in Ireland, the I and all of that, that they were involved, right? But anyway, I don't really believe that. But they, they come over, they, they said to him, and you know what, they come over, but they come over there to frighten him. They didn't really want to kill him or nothing like that, right? So when he saw them, obviously he's thinking, oh, they come to kill me, but his other friends were there as well. So everybody kind of pieced out and said, listen, we got another deal. Um, other people are involved now um, from the original side and the new side now looking at everything and thinking, oh, we can get in a bit of ear as well. Because he's very talkative, Phil Wells, right? So they say, listen, we've got a newspaper, a newspaper man. I believe his name was Andrew Golding. Um, I never met him. I don't know, it's all here to say. Well, it might be true, maybe you lot know more. So they say, Andrew Golding, the first lot that he met down there and plus new people are saying, so Andrew Golden, we've got a story about Florian and Phil Wills. We'll give it to you now. So they've gone to, down and say, listen, give us the photos of Olga, right? The, the little girl, or the girl, he, he, the gymnast, um, the interpreter uh, for the summit there. And give us photos of her because we can sell them. We can get 50, 60, 80, 100 and all that. So Andrew Golden, allegedly, I don't know, man, I don't know. He says to them, he says, yeah, I'll give you that, man. Give me all that and all that. Yeah, I'll sort all that for you and all that. Like that game goes, even if you're not criminals, double crossing things happen all the time. Andrew Golden comes, yeah, all right, we've got the story, we've got the photographs, and da 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 Comes back, he says, yeah, no, nah, I'm not going to give you 60, I'm not going to give you 80, no, because you're involved with the other lot in Ireland. So they say, so they say. So he turns up, right? He says, I'll give you 40, and that's it, and all that, and it, you know. My lot or their lot or whatever down there was criminals. Ah, I would say the 40 and all that. Did Phil Wells get any of that money? Just don't think so. Got a bit of that. But because those other new mates that he had around him now, they said, ah, we, got, we can bring that story, we can bring those other bits um, to the news of the world. My days, boy. So, yeah. So they went to the, they said, yeah, yeah, we'll do, we'll do this bit for you. Don't worry about all them lot. We'll do our bit down there. Everyone's really looking, right, as far as I'm concerned, to knock him. So, you know, it's an easy money and all that for a man who's not really clued up from that life. This is why he mustn't get involved. So they go to the world. They all get grassed up, right? In the end, he runs out of time with no money and everything. Comes back two, three years later in the 90s or whatever. Ends up in the old Bailey. Goes to the old Bailey get six years, right? So that's not too bad. But he was in the category of ace, right? Right? The local one at that, the first one, right? So he turns up, he gets a six, right? Telling everyone he's still got money. So imagine he turns up on the landing, all the dogs, you know, like, yeah, maybe you're looking, that's my man in the paper. Yeah, he knows what well, he's got money. Going to That's how it works when you turn up in prison and your name's being called and you don't really, you're not really that clued up. He's like, that guy, you know, yeah, yeah. I was thinking, yeah, da, 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 da. everyone's trying to befriend him. But the reality was, he never had no money left. I know it's bad, isn't it? So, good geezer, you know. I'm just telling this story, right? And it's the best that I can do with the knowledge that I got. Um, that it never ended well for anyone apart from those dogs like me. Not me, but those dogs um, from that life. They're always looking a bit of quick money um, with people that have, you know, good jobs um, where you can be threatened, threatened or do it nicely or horribly um, and get your wicked wave. And coming up later on, I'm going live later.